Well, thanks for joining us for this episode of Bethel Backstage. Uh, my name is Steve DeWitt, and I get to serve as host for this discussion today, which is going to be most interesting as we are talking about uh, the gospelized husband. We are here in the midst of our Family Month at Bethel Church, and uh, this Sunday's message was on the husband and what it means for the husband to appropriate the gospel into his marriage. Uh, joining me here um, is an esteemed panel. We actually polled all the women in the church, and these are the top four husbands by polling in the entire church. So congratulations, first of all, for being named to such a high honor. But why don't we, uh, we'll, Scott, we'll start with you. Uh, just introduce yourself, uh, your, your, your wife, how long have you been married? Yeah, so I'm Scott Irwin. I work over at the uh, HP campus. I am married to Bethany. And we've been married for about three and a half years. It'll be four years in July. I'm Gary Butler, and uh, I have been married to Carrie Butler this year for 50 years. And I serve as pastor here at uh, Bethel Church in the area of uh, pastoral care. Hi, I'm Jeremy Pena. I'm married to Sarah Pena. I've been married for 15 years, and they've been amazing 15 years. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tyler Carter. I uh, serve as an elder here at Bethel, and I've been married to my wife, Maya, uh, for 17 years. We'll be celebrating 18 this August. Super. And I've been married for eight and a half years to my wife, Jennifer. And so we have a nice spectrum here, both in age and I think in years of marriage, uh, you know, three years to 50 years, and then a few scattered in between. So uh, a breadth of experience, and uh, we hope a breadth of insight. Well, a very quick summary on what we saw today and what we learned today is that uh, to be a Christian husband is to gospelize the way that you lead and love your, your wife and that we are taking our cues from the paradigm, the example of Jesus and the way that he has loved and is loving and will love the church forever. And uh, so how do we do that and what does that look like? Our intent in this is to learn from these these four men, some of the ways that they have learned in their marriage to live out the gospel, to apply the gospel, and uh, to reflect uh, Jesus in that, both in the in the successes and the failures. We hope to hear some good <laughs> failures in this. I think most of us are more encouraged by the failures than the successes, actually. But uh, just to get us going here, how what are some ways that uh, you would look back on your marriage and say the gospel has has affected the way that you have uh, mm. served as a husband, been a, been a husband. And Tyler, I'll, I'll start with you. Well, um, thanks for not making me follow Gary. <laughs> we'll let him back clean up here. Okay, yeah. all right, you get everything I missed. Yeah. Um, I would say when we first got married, our first few years were pretty rough, and it was because we didn't have this, this mindset of what marriage was all about. Marriage was uh, something that, everybody did. It was kind of the next uh, big thing. And I think while we never would have articulated this, I think we were both just seeking our own happiness. Mm. And so um, we were we were believers and we were, um, you know, you say you try to make Christ the center of your marriage, but we didn't really, you know, know what that, what that looked like uh, practically. So it was over time that we realized just what we heard today that um, you know, marriage is an earthly representation of, of Christ's love for the church. And when you hear that, it uh, it just gives you a totally different perspective and appreciation for what your marriage is. So when you know that, um, now it's not about me or her or about our happiness. It's about being a great representation to the world around us for Christ. And so just having that concept really um, practically changed, you know, the way that we the way that we operated, the way that we lived together, the way that we loved each other. And uh, I'd say it's been, um, since then, things haven't been perfect, but totally transformed our marriage. Yeah. Jeremy, how about you? Well, I have to start off with saying uh, the phrase gospelized husband is probably one of the most convicting phrases that I've heard in a long time in a sermon. Like, it's it's one of those things that, like, I hear it, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> how, how am I doing this? Like, how 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 am I doing? Am I, you know? And so I think I break down the word, you know, gospel, like you did in the sermon, and it's just like, man, we're Christ, you know, and 
we're supposed to be that representation uh, to our wives. And what did he do? He he served. He he not only did he serve, he served sacrificially. And and what that truly means. And so I look at how I do that to my for my wife. And and there's some days I come home from work and I'm great at it. You know, I help her with dinner, I help clean up from dinner. And there's some days I get home and man, I just want to stay on the couch and do nothing. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's just the truth. And that's just my heart. And, and so, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, it's, it's one of those phrases that are extremely convicting, but mm-hmm. it's also extremely encouraging because I'm like, I can see how I'm doing it well. And I could also see where I definitely need the work and definitely need to kick it up. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. you know, Scott, uh, you're three years in, okay. <laughs> you're the, you're the newbie here. Uh, but you came into marriage, I mean, you were going into ministry, mm-hmm. you know, the Christian so I did college perfectly. and seminary. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, so you, you at least had some, I guess, framework mm. for, for that. How, how would you say, even in three years, it's been a, a learning curve for you? Yeah, I, I think um, no, no plan survives the field of battle, and you have this idea of what marriage should be like. And, you know, I thought that you know, I knew that my marriage should represent Christ and the church, but uh, when you get into it, and Jeremy, you, you kind of mentioned it, um, that relationship between Christ and the church, the example that he gives is is so giving It's and so unreachable for us, this side uh, of heaven. You, you don't realize how much of a sinner and how much baggage you drag into the relationship until you're like in the midst of it each and every day. But I think just as, as a reminder, uh, the gospelized husband, uh, the gospel tells us that Jesus has power over uh, the presence of sin. And while we won't um, completely see that, uh, it, it's a reminder that we're all working, like it's a work in progress. And I think that gives us, that, that gave me um, just a reminder that I'm not as good as, as I'm, I'm going to get. And I think there's, there's a lot of grace in that. And then I'm, I've, I've received grace, and I should give that as well mm. to my wife. It's a very aspirational mm. model, you know, obviously the the example of Jesus. And some people could be, you know, there's probably a husband out there going, oh, great, i got to be Jesus. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> who can do that? There's no way that it's possible. And yet uh, God is honored in the effort and the trying and the heart mm. and the motivation, even as we fall short of that. So, well, Pastor Gary, it's been a long time since you – got married. I don't know if you can remember way back and, and here you are 50 years later. What reflections would you have on on this subject and being a husband? Well, obviously the greatest challenge of being a, a, a Christian husband is to love your wife the way Christ loved the church. And I, you know, I, I see over and over again how short I come to that standard. And I remember pastoring as a senior pastor for 30 years and I always had a family month And I knew I was going to have to stand in front of the church and talk to them about our marriage a little bit and about how I was doing as Mm -hmm. uh, loving my wife. And you just you just do come up short. And I and I I don't think you you reach 50 years and say, well, now we have got it all figured out. We're still learning. We're still growing. And uh, I think one of the hardest things for me has been to enter into the feelings and the emotions of my wife and to be able to express things the way she feels them. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever learn that, but I do think I've, I've improved. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about the, the husband who's watching this, and, and uh, you know, we've been a little bit ethereal here. Like, yes, we've got to follow Jesus, and, and we know the Bible says that. Uh, what would be some areas that you would say – I was terrible at that, or maybe even still as an area of struggle, like a real, uh, maybe a, a present failure that you are trying to work on. I think it'd be very encouraging to uh, uh, to hear that. And uh, Tyler, Maya asked me to ask you that question right now here in the video. Seems, so I'm and sure I, I, gave, I got her list right here. Let's see if it matches up. I'm sure the, sure the list of positives is much longer. but um, <laughs> She didn't send that. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to make stuff up then. Um, Well, earlier on, like I said, you know, when we were both just pursuing our own happiness, one of the things that I struggled with was trying to be very controlling. Um, I wanted things to go a certain way, and uh, 
and that's the way they were going to go or there was going to be a problem. Um, so I'd say particularly in the area of finances was always something that we that we struggled with. And so um, it was, I've, I've been in the past was bad about um, kind of doing things in unity with her. Um, it was more about what I wanted to do um, than what we were going to do. So, you know, as as I come to this realization of what a gospelized husband is, I've certainly grown in that, um, and she's seen that over the years. But I'd say of all of my, my flaws, that has probably been uh, the biggest one, um, particularly early on. Mm. You know, Paul Tripp has a book uh, entitled Sex and Money, and he wrote it on those two subjects because uh, he says that, it is my memory at least, having having read the book, um, that these are the these are the two areas in the human heart that most clearly can express a kind of selfishness or self orientation. And in marriage, you know, these are two big parts of what it means to be married, and can often be flashpoints in uh, in a in a in a relationship. So, uh, Jeremy, how about you? Man, all right, so. I think right now the biggest thing that um, I know that I need to work on and need to get better on is is just praying with Sarah. And just um, I, there's times when I do it and I'll do it for like, you know, a, a long period of time and we do really well at it. She loves it. It encourages her. It, you know, it really just makes her feel loved and supported and loved and cared for. And then I'll just like stop doing it for a while. And it's just, guys, I'm telling you. If you want to be a true gospelized husband, pray with your wives. Just pray with them. Spend that little bit of time. Try to, even if it's, a, sometimes it can be awkward. Sometimes it can be, you know, schedules don't line up. She's still doing a few things. I'm still doing a few things. But stop in the middle of the hallway. Stop in, you know, like Susie, you guys lay down in bed and just, and just pray together. And it's something that I've struggled with in my 15 years where I'm good with for like a long period of time. And then I stop. And so, yeah, that's right now I would say, Things that, like, when I think about what do I need to get better at to be a true gospelized husband is I want to get better praying with Sarah. So That's great. I remember I, I read uh, Kevin DeYoung was a blog or something, and he, he talked about how he and his wife pray every night before they go to sleep. And I thought to myself, that is a really good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so for at least three or four nights we did that. <laughs> And, uh, and then you get, you know, you, you forget and, and I'm super sleepy when I go to, you know, when I go to bed. So that, uh, finding the right rhythm for that is, yes. is one of the, one of the challenges. Uh, Gary Butler, it's hard for me to think that there's any failure that you have. I hold you in high regard, but I know that you're a sinner. And <laughs> if Carrie was here, she might have a few things to say. What, what might she say is, um, uh, things that she's seen, you know, maybe you've, you were this way, but you've you've grown. I think the biggest challenge of my life as a married man has been to hear the hurt and the pain that I sometimes bring into Carrie's life. And the first thing I want to do is to defend myself and let her know what I meant when I said that. What she wants me to do and I, what I'm learning to do is to enter into her feelings and then address the issue at a later time. And I think, I think it's so natural as, uh, as a man to defend yourself and to want to have her understand what was going on in your heart when you said that. Yeah, we want to win. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're the hunting, gathering, you know, conquering. Yeah. We want to win. And uh, I've learned in marriage there's winning and then there's winning. And sometimes a uh, in, in, an organized retreat can uh, win the war, and so that's if, a good. I, I would just add oh. to what you said. It, that certainly, what you said it, it applies, but kind of on the same note, um, when you're when she's sharing an issue with you, and it, maybe it's not about you. I think as men, we naturally want to solve a problem because we're problem solvers, and that's I've learned that's not what they want they just want you to to shut up and <laughs> and and listen and if yeah. uh if they want you know some advice maybe they'll ask for that or maybe you give it down the road but i think just like you said just listening and hearing and them knowing that you care is uh is really what they're looking for yeah that's good hey let's keep going with the practical tips as we kind of try to wrap up here soon 
So just some practical things that maybe have been helpful. You mentioned uh, uh, prayer, Jeremy. Any other things like that that uh, that you've incorporated into your marriage that have been life-giving? I would say that uh, as far as practical, speaking goes just just serving your wife like truly hands-on serving your wife um so for me that looks like just helping out around the house um you know helping helping out with the dishes uh getting the kids uh breakfast in the morning i remember when we went um through this series a couple years ago pastor steve you had said that the vacuum was a love machine so i uh I vacuum uh, pretty frequently, um, and uh, you know we have four kids. I so said just... the sound of a vacuum is foreplay. That's what I said. Okay, actually. well I was trying to edit that a little yeah, bit. Uh, so kids may be watching this. Um, um, you know, but just helping out with the kids. So practically, just you know, giving your time and serving your wife. And I would add to that that learning what communicates love to your wife because we sometimes think, well, I'll buy some flowers on the way home from the office or bring some candy or something. And and that may not be something that really communicates love to her. But I know when I go out to my flower garden and I pick the prettiest flowers I can get my hands on and create a bouquet and say, here, Carrie, in order to be in this bouquet, you had to be one of the best flowers in the garden. Now, that communicates (laughs) to her. And I think when when men ask me, how do I communicate love to my wife? I say, you've got to learn to know your wife and then communicate it in language that she can understand. And isn't that what Peter says? Dwell with your wife in an understanding way. Yes. Uh, and Peter, we know, was married. So he had some insights into into what it means to study your wife, you know, to be a student of your wife and what she's like. And no two men are the same and no two women are the same and we're all very unique and uh, so we should understand what makes our wives uh, what makes their heart uh, sing Scott any uh, in three years any yeah, any yeah. wonderful wisdom that you want to share with us <laughs> we we have worked hard to set aside specific time during the week I think Gary like you said my wife responds to and feels loved by being uh, like attended to and having quality time and so we've worked really hard Saturday mornings, coffee shop. We don't even have to really be talking, just that we're in the same space. We're doing something together. She loves it and feels valued by it. Um, and that's something that, that I've had to learn and work on. I'm like, oh, you know, my wife really likes it when I plan a date night, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think uh, that's been something that's worked really well for us, date nights or Saturday mornings, time, time set apart for her. Mm. Good, good. Jeremy? Uh, be intentional. Do things um, just randomly for her. Um, you know, me emptying a dishwasher Sunday morning, you know, and just serving her and just loving her just to take things off her plate and just, you know, it's huge. Um, our wives are busy. I mean, we go to work and sometimes we think they're just at home, but they're taking care of the whole household. They're, their minds never stop, you know, they're always going. and. And any way we could just um, just hear her and to be attentional and just be there for her and just serve her. And, um, you know, the vacuum, the, <laughs> you know, emptying the dishwasher, um, you know, just any way you could serve your wife. Um, try to outserve your wife. And that is very hard to do because I know you guys' wives are probably a lot like mine. They're always doing something. And um, truly try to outserve your wife and just see how much love that's going to show her mm. that's good that's good anybody else want anything else that uh came to mind? and your kids are watching too and my oldest daughter said to me a few years ago she said you know dad you never used to help in the kitchen but you do now and and i just thought who would have thought she was watching that but she did well and just just on that note you know the the kids are watching that and having a positive relationship with your wife is one of the best things you can, you can do for your kids. We went through a study a few years ago called Growing Kids God's Way. And that's that's one of the main things that I remember is just your relationship with your wife is is one of the best things you can do to provide a great environment, you know, for your kids. So Tyler, you wanted to mention a couple other resources. Yeah, so a book that really impacted us was uh, This Momentary Marriage by John Piper. That's a great one to read and really transformed our marriage. And then another one is uh, When Sinners Say I Do by Dave Harvey. So that's a great book to read just as a couple, or we've also gone through it as a small group. And so I'd suggest either one of those. Excellent. Well, 
Guys, thanks for sharing. And uh, Bethel Church, uh, wives especially, you might be loving this weekend, challenging the husbands. But uh, next Sunday, it's your turn, the gospelized wife. And I am, we're already working on a panel of wives similarly to talk about uh, how to be, a, how to be a, a gospelized wife and practical things that they're learning. And, and uh, I think it's going to be super good. So watch for that next Sunday. And uh, let's pray that God continues to bless Family Month at Bethel Church. We want to uh, help our families, our, our parents, our children, our grandparents to thrive and to bring glory to God in the home. Thanks for tuning in today.